Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to go into some uh, K-means clustering and uh, customer segmentation. So basically it's Saturday morning and what's better to do than do some customer segmentation, right? Well, what I'm going to show you here, this is Alteryx, and I'm going to show you a way to do this that's really quick. So in Alteryx you have these little icons here and you can see if you click over them or whatever it'll tell you what they are k-centroids cluster analysis now into the k-means one if i select that this is the append tool so this one here will uh, allow me to it's called the append cluster to put those values back into my data set so i'll have you know depending how many clusters i have if i have three for instance if i have four then i would have numbers one through four and all the data rows will be assigned by that which is neat to have when I take this out of Alteryx and I put it in Excel or I put it in a Tableau or any other program where I want to go and visualize it for people to show my users, hey, this is what I want to see. That I want to see the customer breakouts. I want to see how the customers change over time. You do some really cool things with cluster data, but you have to have it first. Now, what I want to show you here is this one right here. I have this in a little container down here, and this is the Key Centroids Diagnostics tool. This one in Alteryx will give you the optimal number of clusters. The problem is, is that you have to set, you know, the minimum number and the maximum number. If you set a big number like 25 clusters, you want to look at up to 25, it takes forever. Even with just three to eight, it's going to take a very long time on an average data set. It takes way too long. So what I do is I don't use this. I just, so this guy right here, what I would do is disable this. I don't even need this. And the reason being is I'm going to show you a quicker way. I've got it in other videos on here on my channel, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you right here. What I do is I take you to R, which is right here, R Studio, and then I'm going to take you to this. This is called Rattle. And what I can do is I can quickly put that data set right here, the same exact data set, weekly pawn shop sales. It could be anything. It doesn't matter what the data set is. But I put it in here, and uh, I just set you know what the uh, main target is for it, uh, the identifiers, what makes each row unique. Um, right here, count one and count two does it fine. And then I've got some sales selected as my target. Could be some transactions. I would probably do the same thing. And I've done that before, and it has basically the exact same number of clusters and everything that comes out of it. So what you do is you execute it here, run it based on this. And once you've run that, um, what you're going to do is it's going to show you down below that your set, it's regression models enabled. That, that once you see this little row down here, that means you're set to go to the next level. So then you click on cluster, right? And you select K-means. K-means is the most popular and most authoritative and used form of clustering. There's other tools you can use, but if you use K-means, basically everybody knows what you're talking about, and everybody knows it's pretty standard and going to be pretty correct or the most accurate. Uh, there's a few cases where some of the others might be based on weird data and stuff like that, but this is your best bet. It's easier. See, now in here, I can choose 25 clusters. It's going to come back fast, almost immediately, versus if I did that in Alteryx, it takes like 24 hours. It's crazy on a regular data set, you know, like this one. Um, so I've got 25 clusters I'm picking because I want to see everything and anything. I'm not going to go ever. I never go above usually five or nine clusters, but let's just take a look at it and see. So what you would do is you put iterate clusters, because if you don't put this, it'll just put the data here. It won't show it over here in this plots. If you're on viewer, select plots in our studio, because that's where it's going to show it. And then what you would do is you would just hit execute like this. And what it's going to do is it gives you just like this. It gives you, this one gives you zero to 25 clusters. And what you have is you have this product here, this graph, which shows you this sum of within means. And so what you're looking for here is with these two lines, you want to see where they're closest because where they're closest is where you're most accurately going to find your cluster numbers. So like obviously here, everything from like 14 on through, they're basically touching. Those are all great. But you don't necessarily really want to have 14 clusters. It's kind of hard to differentiate between 14 clusters of data. I mean, it could be good to look at, but... What I want to look at here is I want to go this way. And if I go this way, oh, look at that one. At number three, it's actually touching. That means I've got an almost definite source of clusters right there, three clusters. So I want to use that. So I take that idea from this, and then I go back to Alteryx. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this tool right here. I'm going to skip this. So this I could actually minimize this if I wanted to. So I click here because I don't need this one. This is the uh, Case Centroids Diagnostics tool, which I really don't need because it's going to take all day to run that. I don't want to do that. So I can click on this container here, click Disabled, click in here, 
it's going to hide that one so it won't run that one give me errors anymore and then what I want to do is I've got this guy right here based off my data I've selected every field that I could possibly want to have data from what I've done is you go down here I select uh, z-score k-means okay and then I've got three because I found that out in the previous graph from our our studio and uh, rattle and the number of starting seeds 10 is usually a good number for that you're not going to see a huge difference if you take that up to 15 it just slows you down a little bit so then what I want to do is you want to make sure this is connected to your data and you you could see it here because I wouldn't be able to select these things next you've got this append tool right so the append tool doesn't have a lot of options to it really just name it and then you just make sure that your original data comes into the bottom rung or the bottom data entry point and then your data from this from your case centroid cluster goes to the top because this one is an append tool and what it's going to do is it's going to append your original data with the uh, cluster information and then what I've done here is out of this I have it hooked up to a output data uh, where I've set up an ex a blank Excel sheet okay and what it's going to do is it's going to write to this test1.xlsx sheet and it's going to write to the sheet 2 tab there is no sheet 1 in this one it got deleted it's fine whatever but that's fine it could say anything I could name it uh, cluster analysis or I could name it clusters or cluster appending or data with clusters it could be anything okay and this one right here this bottom one here that's a viewpoint so what that does that's just going to give me a view in, or a window into the k-means cluster and it's going to show me the actual clusters their distance uh, from each other the max distance degrees of separation um, and you'll see down here in this chart if they're neatly arranged or not so like if you look here the cluster number three you could pretty much put a circle around it cluster number two you can put a circle around that and cluster number one a circle around that it's very clean very good and it's a 3d graph which is kind of hard to see here because it's got all those different fields in it but you can clearly see they're broken out and we know that because in the previous one we had a very high almost 100 percent degree of separation at that cluster level so now what i'm going to do is we've got our data we've got it all set up okay what and i've minimized this one because we don't need that one that would take all day to run again i told you that so now what we want to do is just run this so if i hit run watch what happens here we're bringing our data and you can actually watch this is what's really cool in, in alteryx this could be any size data it doesn't matter it's going to run it versus excel has a cutoff at like 500,000 rows and that depends on how many columns you have in there as to what see how quick it's done with this one so ran without any errors it's going to have warnings it's fine i'm not worried about that and uh what we do is first we can look at this again that shows you what we just what i just showed you the breakout of the data and it shows you this degrees of separation but most importantly what's happened is it's created this so if i right click on this little guy right here it's going to show me what's going to go to that output file and i can actually see the cluster data that's been appended in the cluster column because that's what i named it okay so you can actually name the column whatever you want I just name it cluster so I know in that column I have the clusters for each data row so this one's cluster 3 this one belongs to cluster 1 and you can go on down through there and see there's a lot of 1's 2's 3's it's not going to be any 4's or 5's because we chose 3 clusters then you click on this guy right here and that's where the data is going to go into sheet 2 so if I go to that and I want to look at that I have to go to that uh, let's find that that's in Let's see here Excel test one it should be this guy right here I think it's test one right yep so let's open that up and let's take a look at it let's see what the data comes out as give it a second here do 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 and there we go there's our data we saw it before up to here now it's got the cluster information in it so every row Except for if it's good decided, oh, because that one's missing it. It's got a null. So that's the other thing is you want to clean up your nulls because if you don't, they just won't have information. You might want to delete out your rows of nulls or uh, fix them. But regardless, everything except for nulls, so basically every row except for I think that one has a cluster assigned to it. That one was unassignable because the missing information right here was in an important row, probably average temp or, well, it doesn't matter, all of them are brought in for clustering. So uh, anything that when, you, if I didn't bring that one in for clustering, if I 
I could deselect that one where I ran it, and then it would just um, it would not count that one, and it would have given appended that to a cluster. But regardless, it doesn't matter. It's one row. I'm not worried about that. But this tells me from here now I can go and create uh, graphs based on this and see the actual outbreak of the clusters if I wanted to. I can also research more into them and say, well, why? What makes these different? Why is this one in cluster one? Why is this in cluster two? And why is this in cluster three? What are the breakouts here? What's important here? And I might find that, you know, like when I'm looking at the sales, look at this. The number three cluster has 4,701 for sum of sale for this one, and number one has very low numbers, number three has higher numbers. So there's probably going to be a price breakout, as in how much sales. There could also be a transactional breakout. Let's see, transactions are much lower in the one, so there's, they're, they're directly correlated. Anyway, I can run a correlation analysis if I really want to get into that. And uh, maybe there's a count, but uh, count may or may not. Let's see, high is a three. Um, highs are threes. Yeah, so count count of the transactions. Some of transactions uh, could be, you know, there's something to definitely worth looking into there to see what areas these customers come from. And basically, this is customer segmentation or customer analysis, uh, a good part of data analysis and data science. So if you're going to do a data science project, one of the first things you have to do is look for your customer segmentation. Are there areas where you need to differentiate? Because, you know, for instance, if you're doing a data science project and you're going to do a marketing analysis pre before a new product launch, right, you want to make sure you have the correct target market, target area, and then you also want to make sure it's not biased. And so that's where this cluster analysis, cluster uh, segmentation, customer segmentation can uh, help you to figure that out and see, is it biased? Or are there areas that we really need to look into that we haven't been looking into? Or are there areas that we should target better or more? And what's really cool with this piece of data right here is there's some uh, different graphs you can do if you have a time series. Now, this one it does have time series, so it's got by period and by quarters. And we could go by period and see if there's a cluster change. So do customers change from period one to period two to period three to period four? And they will. So what is the movement? What is the shift? You know, are more customers going from obviously three is our better customers they spend more. One is our lower customers that don't spend as much. And the threes buy more, uh, have more transactions, visit more often. So what we want to see is over time, do the ones, group ones, go to group twos and what uh, marketing offers, what campaigns could we do to move them from one to cluster to the other. You know, we'd want them to go from a one to a two and from a two to a three. And maybe even from a three, maybe three has, because it's got a huge range in there, maybe we need to break that out into six clusters or we need to break just the three itself into subclusters so that we can see in group three, is there a low, a medium, and a high? If so, maybe we want to track the shift of movement from three to four to five. Maybe at the, in the summer we find that people go from a five back to a two. Well, what could we do to, to reverse that, to keep them as high shoppers? Maybe we give them a discount. Maybe we give them a reward. Maybe we send them a letter of thank you. It could be anything. It depends on the business you're in and what you do. But what's really neat here is I showed you a couple tools here that are very simple to use. Okay, And uh, so if we go into our studio here, I showed you how to use Rattle, which is right here. Rattle, if you don't have it, don't know how to use it, just go on my videos, look for it. I show you, I walk through from how to load it up to how to load in your data set and how to do clusters. I showed you in this video how to do that. And there's a reason why you want to do it because it gives you a really fast on a high number versus if I did this in Alteryx, this piece here, it takes forever. It'll be accurate, but it will take forever and annoy you. So instead, just get this piece here. I know it's a three. You know, I could also pick several of them and run them through Alteryx. That's fine, too. And then you go back to Alteryx. Once you've got this, you go in here. You go to your case centroids cluster analysis tool. You load this up, and uh, you go and click off the, the fields you want to bring in. You make sure it's Z-score, K-means. You can run neural gas or K-medians. It'll be pretty similar. And uh, you can choose a number of clusters that you want because this one, you're going to be specific. You know that three was really high, you know, from the previous graph we did. Number of starting seeds should always be number higher than this. 10 is a good number. So then make sure they're connected correctly. Make sure your data source is 
connected to the bottom of the append tool and that the output, the O, from the case centroids cluster analysis goes to the top uh, input for the append cluster, these cross over here. And then connect that to an output uh, file, just create a blank Excel sheet, save it, and put that in. You click on here, you click on file, and you can go and select where your file is. Okay, and then always the bottom one here is going to be your read. So you're going to read your output. So you're just going to look at it. You put a browse. Browse is right here. You bring that over. Click on it. And once you've run it, you, you obviously if you haven't run it yet, you're going to see these little red marks saying, you know, warning saying or alerts saying, you know, you need to run it first. But we've run it, and there's our data. And we can see the key, we can see the breakout of it, and then we append it to our data. And so this is our original data, and then our data gets the extra column of cluster, and we're good to go. We can then take it from there and go further with our analysis. We can look at all kinds of different things like I just told you. So this is what we do in data science and data analysis on a daily basis for marketing, for uh, digital, for uh, uh, you name it, anything, sales, any customer insights, whatever it is that a company wants to look into or they want to delve into a campaign, they want to delve into a major uh, uh, area of the market, whatever it is they want to do, cluster and uh, customer segmentation is a big piece of that. If you can learn this, you just learn quickly how to do customer segmentation. I know a lot of people that have been in the business for a couple of years and they do not know how to do customer segmentation or how to do it correctly or how to do it quickly. So you want to be able to do it correctly, quickly, and accurately. And this does it, shows it to you real quickly through using R, R Studio, Rattle, and Alteryx. I hope you found this helpful and educational. Um, just have to have the tools. And if you don't have them, all of them are available free. Alteryx is a paid program, but you can get free samples, especially if you're in school or college. I believe they give you a one-year trial. Uh, might be one month. I, I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. But you can do that and utilize it. And you'll find, just like I did here, it's really easy to use, really quick, really fast on any data set. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to uh, subscribe and like. And that way you can see all the other great videos I have going out on shortly here. And please take a look at my uh, channel and check out all the great videos I have out there on all kinds of stuff from data science, data analysis, Alteryx, Excel, data wrangling. You name it, it's on there. And if it's not there, it's going to be up there soon. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.